Well, hello again. And it's Tuesday again, so it's time for another instalment. Now, do you remember last week, Inkcap and his friend Scales had been working very hard in the garden and the other mushrooms were all obeying their instructions from Inkcap. And then Inkcap and Scales had gone back to Inkcap's little plant pot house where they'd told each other stories and they'd had food and they'd curled up and gone to sleep. But then, in the middle of the night, they'd been woken up by someone knocking on the door. Hello? Inkcap called. Who's there? Who's knocking at this time of night? Oh, Inkcap, you're here. A hushed, worried voice answered. Oh, it's terrible. You must come at once. We don't know what to do. Inkcap rubbed his eyes, adjusting them to the gloomy night. Immediately he recognised the little mushroom who stepped into view. Yellow, he said. The yellow mushy with the almost see-through cap nodded, a sad expression on his face. Well, whatever's the matter, little one? Inkab asked. Oh, it's Bella, Gillow replied. She has a fever. She'd been like it since we got back from the caterpillar task this afternoon. Mother asked me to go and get help. A fever, you say? Inkab queried. He turned back to Scales, waving him over. Yeah, she won't feel him well after supper and got sleepy very quickly. Mother thought it was down to the cold and the wet, but it's got much worse. So much worse. Oh, please, we don't know what to do. Scales popped his head out of the window crack to see what all the fuss was about. Inkcap could see Gillow struggling to hold the tears back. He hopped onto the window ledge, straightened his wide white cap, and gave him an encouraging smile. Now then, there'll be no tears tonight. Take us to Bella and your family. We'll see about this fever. Inkcap helped Scales clamber out of the window, and they both took off down the gravel path, hurrying away behind the tiny yellow mushroom. At the bottom edge of the allotment, right next to the outer fence, there's a pile of fallen branches. The grump is often to be seen carrying these branches as he clears the ground around the old oak tree that leans over the allotment fence. Back he goes throughout the season, taking some more of the rotten wood to the compost heap. Inkcap is often amazed how one little branch nestled under the hedge is always left behind. He can never work it out. It's as if the grump knows about their secret world and is somehow protecting it just like the mushrooms protect his garden. This decaying branch is where the Bonnet family live. It's known by the mushrooms as the Tuft. The Tuft is home to many other mushroom families too. If you look closely enough, you can see weeny windows of light and colour amongst doors of all shapes and sizes. There are higgledy-piggledy chimneys piping out smoke and steam from the welcoming warmth within. Yes, a buzzling little network of mushy homes, all connected within the wood. It may not sound very homely, but old rotten wood, rich in nutrients and moisture, is the perfect spot for mushrooms to live. Bonnet was an angel bonnet mushroom. She was delicate and beautiful, with a dainty light olive green body. Her cap was one of the most exquisite caps to be seen in the magical world of Mushroom Marvellous. It was bell-shaped and flowing with elegant pleats. And like Gillow's and her other two children's, it was almost see-through. Gillow, Brushin and Bella, two brothers and one sister, all lived with their mother, Bonnet, in their house in the Tuft. Scales loved visiting the Tuft. There was something so comforting about the constant buzz of activity. He could imagine the families all sitting together, stories being told on cold, dark nights, just like tonight. But as Scales, Inkcap and Gillow reached the tough on this particular night, they were anxious about what they'd find. Bonnet's house was at the top of the tuft. Gillow was first through the little wooden archway leading into the main room of the Bonnet family home, 
and Gab had to duck down under the little arch to stop his hat from being knocked off. Scales followed behind, puffing and panting. The room glowed with a flickering fire, a tiny flame that burned in the centre of the room in a little hole filled with dried dead moss. It was the sullen-looking shadows on the walls that Incap noticed first. Bonnet, hunched over, with another little mushroom silhouette close at her side. Gillow ran to his family and put his arm around his brother. They were so alike, Gillow and Brushen, it was almost impossible to tell them apart. Look! He came! Gillow pointed in the direction of the doorway. Incap's come to help us! And Scales, Incap added stepping further into the room. Gillow's told us of this fever, Bonnet. What has happened? Let me have a look. Bonnet stood tall and stepped back. Oh, Inkcap, she said. She shook her head and let the tall grey mushroom through to see. Poor thing, came home from Polytunnel to us this afternoon and we just thought she was tired from working. Inkcap stepped closer to Sleepy Bella lying near the fire's edge. She lay down to rest, and after a few hours she started to complain of a fever. Their brothers were tired too, but they were fine after rest and some salt cup. The two yellow-bellied brothers nodded in unison. Inkup placed his hand on Bella's brow. Her skin, which was a lighter colour green than her mother's, was hot to touch. Bella, he said, taking his hand away, it's Inkup. Can you hear me? He spoke very softly so as not to startle her. Bella's little chest puffed up and down and she rolled onto her side, letting out a gasp. Bella, and kept tried again. Tell me how you feel, little one. Can you open your eyes? They all waited patiently as Bella slowly opened one of them. When she recognised who was kneeling beside her, she managed to open the other eye. Hot. She whispered, S -s -s so hot. Shh, now, said Incap. Then if it's hot you feel, we'll do everything we can to keep you cool. Incap turned to the two brothers, who watched on worriedly. Gillow still had his arm around Brushen. We need to move her away from the fire, and we need as much water as we can find. It'll be morning in a few hours. Make sure you collect the dew at first light and have it here ready to cool her skin as the fever burns. Keep her cool and moist. That's very important. Do you understand? They nodded in agreement. And Scales, open that window. In fact, open them all. Bella needs as much cold air as she can get. As Inkcap and Bella's two brothers moved her to a cooler spot, Scales hurried round the room. He rolled up the square patches of material that covered each of the five windows, hidden in the nooks and crannies of the walls. Instantly, a breeze of fresh air entered and danced around the room. With the rush of cold, Bella's tiny body seemed to relax. She curled herself and tucked her knees up and her breathing settled. Oh, thank you, Bonnet said, letting out a sigh of relief. That's the most comfortable she's been since this afternoon. No need for thank yous, Bonnet, Incap answered. She isn't quite out of the woods yet. She's more comfortable, yes, but she must stay this way to keep the fever at bay. He squeezed her hand and gave her a nod. Remember, as much dew as you can at first light, he instructed the brothers again. Got it? Yes, they both said at once. We'll come back in the morning and check how Bella's getting on, Incap said to Scales. There's nothing more we can do now but wait until she rides the fever out. Inkcap let go of Bonnet's hand and walked towards the doorway. He was so confused. Never had he overworked the little mushrooms of the garden so much that they'd caught a fever. He couldn't help wondering if this was his fault. As Scales joined him at the entrance, Inkcap turned to Bonnet and said, I'm so sorry. I'll do whatever I can to help Bella. I will make this better. With that, he and Scales went off into the night. Dawn would break in a couple of hours, and the two mushrooms knew they had a worrying day ahead of them. In cap and scales made their way across the garden, ducking under lettuce leaves and hobbling over gravel paths. Scales, In cap said, you know we have to do something to help Bella. I'm not sure I could live with myself if anything happened to her. 
Scales gave a light tug on Inkcap's cape. But this isn't your fault. I know you think it is because of the afternoon's work in the tunnel, but surely if anyone was going to be so worn out from ferrying about, it'd be me. It was the first time Scales had seen his friend look so gloomy. He didn't know what to say to make him feel better. It really was a mystery why Bella was so ill, and if Inkcap, the clever, bold mushroom, couldn't work it out, then all they could do was hope. Walking a few paces behind, Scales tried to focus on the magical silhouettes of the plants and the vegetables in the night. He imagined the long carrot greens bowing down and taking the hands of the little radish shoots, dancing and laughing as if they hadn't a care in the world. He noticed the golden onion heads, pointed and proud, peeping out from their soil beds like rockets waiting to launch into the sky. Thump! Scales' dreaming was brought to an abrupt end. Inkcap had halted right in his tracks. It caused Scales to bump straight into him, almost knocking him to the ground. Shh! Inkcap whispered, ducking down. He pushed his hand behind, warning Scales to stop and be quiet. Crouching a little further, he turned his head to the side. He was listening for something. Scales looked through the gaps between the carrot tops hanging across their view. It was so still and quiet, you could hear a pin drop. Then there it was. A scuttling sound. And to find out what the scuttling is, you'll have to join me next time for another thrilling episode of Ink Cap and the Blight of the Bonnets by Kylie Dixon. Or, if you can't wait for that, you can go and buy the book and read it for yourself. <laughs> now, I won't be here next Tuesday because I'm not here. I'm away. Um, but the following Tuesday, the 26th of April, I'll be back. And if you haven't bought the book and you've been able to wait, you'll find out what was making that scuttling sound in the garden. This is such a good book. I hope you're enjoying it. Thank you so much for watching.